This is the June of 2009 exam, page 6, starting with question 36. The work done in lifting an apple one meter near the Earth's surface is approximately. Formula for work is force times distance. And so it's force times distance. And the force that we have to overcome is the weight, which is mg. So uh, the real question is, uh, what's the mass of an apple? So this is a question asking about the approximate mass of an apple. Gravity is, let's call it 10 meters per second squared, times 1 meter. Uh, so we're going to, even if we had a mass of a kilogram, that would give us, 1 kilogram would be 10 joules. So we're crossing these out. Well, fortunately, 10 joules is an option, and a one kilogram apple is huge. So maybe it's uh, a tenth of that, which would give us a work of one joule. Now, this would be uh, a tenth, a hundredth, a thousandth of a kilogram. So that's a one gram apple, and that's not going to be the answer. Question 37 and 38 pertain to this graph. I like to look at the graph first and figure it out. Start at zero, I get up to a velocity of 10 meters per second in four seconds. So I have a change in velocity of 10 meters per second and a time equal to four seconds. So I've got, what about an acceleration of uh, 2.5 meters per second per second. That works. And then I go for uh, 10 meters per second for the next two seconds. All right, let's see what they want to know. 37, what's the acceleration of the car at t equals 5 seconds? <laughs> well, at t equals 5 seconds, it's not accelerating. Zero. It's traveling at 10. It continues to travel at 10. Trick question. Don't fall for it, because look at here. 2.5 meters per second squared was the acceleration of the car up to 4 seconds. It was a trap. Question 36, what's the total distance traveled during the entire six seconds? Well, uh, as it turns out, uh, distance is uh, velocity times time, which, as it turns out, is the area under this graph. So if I travel at 10 meters per second for two seconds, I will have gone 20 meters. And then I went from 0 to 10, so it's the area under here. So it's 1 half base times height, so it's uh, 10 times 4, 40, half of that, an additional 20 meters. I've got a total distance traveled of 40 meters. Let's see. Not that. 40 meters is right. 10 meters, that's... Now see, we didn't even have to do this triangle. All we had to know is that this part was 20 meters. We could find the right answer. It's got to be more than 20 meters. It's going to be less than 60. There's the right answer. A person who weighs 785 newtons on the Earth weighs 298 newtons on Mars. What's the gravitational field strength? Well, on Earth, our weight is equal to mass times acceleration due to gravity. So the mass would be weight divided by g. So 785 divided by 9.81 would be, I don't know, about 80 kilos. And uh, so what would be the uh, uh, acceleration on Mars? Well, it's not going to be 9.8 because it's going to be less. So it's going to be about uh, 298 divided by 80. And that's right around 3.7 something. Units are all newtons per kilogram, so there we go. I like it. Question 40. A motorcycle being driven on a dirt path hits a rock. Its 60 kilogram cyclist is projected over the handlebars at... What kind of a sick person wrote this question? They're taking this kid and they're throwing him over the motorcycle for a physics problem. Oh, oh no. He's going to run into a haystack. When was the last time anybody ever saw a haystack? This is terrible. Who wrote this question? Oh, if the cyclist is brought to rest in a 0.5 second, the magnitude of the average force exerted on the cyclist by the haystack. Oh, this is going to make him safe. I hate this. This is an attempt for some old physics teachers trying to make this relevant for you young kids who are riding around on your motorcycles, crashing into haystacks. 
See, that's what tells you. That's an old guy that wrote it. There hasn't been a haystack around for decades. It's an impulse problem. Basically, it says uh, impulse, J, causes a change in momentum. Force times time will cause your mass to change its velocity. So, force times time equals mass times change in velocity. So a writer of physics questions is writing his wheelchair at 20 meters per second. So we got the velocity. He's 60 kilograms. Half a second to hit that haystack. So uh, m delta v divided by t. Let's do the math. <laughs> oh yeah, the right answer. The biggest number on the thing. That's the most amount of force. 24, 1, 2, 3. 2.4 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Yikes! Oh yeah, but he'll be okay, boys and girls. Don't worry about him. He's just fine. He hit a haystack. Let's move on to the next question quickly. Don't look over there. Question 41 and 42 refer to a boy pushing his wagon. Well, you see that happening a lot, kids with their wagons pushing them. At a constant speed along a level sidewalk. The graph represents the relationship between the horizontal force and the distance the wagon moves. So he exerts the same force for the entire trip. What is the total work done by the boy pushing it four meters? Well, work is force times distance. And so, uh, and interestingly enough, it would be the area under this graph. 30 times 4, or about 120 joules. That's 120 joules right there. As the boy pushes the wagon, what happens to the wagon's energy? Well, we were told that it was a horizontal force going on a flat level sidewalk. So it's not gaining any gravitational. And... Uh, it's traveling at uh, constant speed. So it's not getting kinetic. So any of the work being done must uh, uh, be adding to its heat. It's turning, the friction is turning into heat. That means the internal energy is increasing. Internal energy.